In this portion of the training, we will be discussing admin permissions. By default, all accounts in Course Key will be created as staff accounts or student accounts. Your staff accounts can be elevated to be made as admin accounts. There are four different levels of admin permissions. You have admin level one, which will have the most permissions in Course Key, then admin level two, admin level three, what we know as staff permissions, which are faculty permissions, and lastly, admin level four. Your school has the ability to select who will fall under each of these categories as the different levels of permissions. To assist in this effort, Korski has created an outline or templates for which permissions would be given to each type of admin. We have our admin level four, which is here, and we have it split up by titles, the functions they will have the ability to view, uh, and which specific permissions in course key they'll have the ability to access. We have this split up for all of the different levels and you have the ability to look in this document and be able to tell which users you would like to have access to, to which permissions. This document lists our recommendations and what we find most helpful for our clients. However, if you would like to organize it in a different way or assign permissions in a different way, you are more than welcome to do so. In preparation for launch, we ask that you review these recommendations for different admin level permissions and that you provide us a list here with all of your admins and which level of permissions you would like to assign to them in order for us to assist in assigning these permissions in bulk. However, if you are a highest level admin, you do have the ability to control the admin permissions for the different users for directly from within your course key account. So if you log into your course key account here and you click on management and users, you will be able to see all the users at your school. And what you can do is click on the name of your admins or your staff accounts. You can click on user information here at the top you can click edit user info to make a staff account an admin account because again, staff accounts are created by default and you would need to elevate them to make them admin accounts. You can toggle on this admin account toggle here, this main toggle and click save changes. This will make it an admin account. However, that is only the first step of the process. Next, you need to go into schools. Once you click on schools, you will see here all of the individual admin permissions that you have the ability to assign or remove. Each of these admin permissions has a little description underneath. You have the ability to toggle them on and or off as you see fit. Lastly, you would click save changes. Now, if a admin has access to more than one campus, you would need to assign permissions for each campus. So you would click on school here and you would select the campus from the drop down and you would be able to manage the different permissions through here. Just don't forget to click save changes. Something important to note about this process is that admin permissions are only the rules of what the different users can do within course key with what they see. However, what they see is determined by the courses that they are given access to, either by the student information system, if your school is integrated, or the courses they have access to by being added manually in course key through either the courses tab or the import tab. It means that if you have a user that has access to make um, edits to students' time outside of the allotted instructor edit window, they can only make these edits to courses that are they are actually given access to in course key and that would depend on if they were given access to the course from the SIS or the student information system or if they were added to the course within course key. What does this mean? This means that being able to view courses is going to be reliant on being added to courses either through the SIS or if you're a non-integrated client through course key itself. This is not going to be something that is going to be granted through the admin permissions because admin permissions is only going to be the rules of what the, what the users can actually do, what they can see. So that is something important to note. Another type of admin that we do create for our integrated clients. So if you have a 
SIS of Nexus specifically, we can create a default level admin, which means that every time a course is created in course key, that person will be added as an admin to that course. However, this is something specific to our Nexus clients. Please let us know if you have any questions regarding this topic.